should I feel the way I do? Welcome everyone to a new episode of the Expect Miracles podcast. We have a very special guest today, Dr. Priya Mystery, the TMJ doc. Um, she is a phenomenal TMJ specialist out of Vancouver, Washington. I am thrilled to have her on the podcast today. I believe this is the first TMJ specialist we've had on the podcast, so this is great. Dr. Priya, how are you today? I'm well. Thank you for having me. Thank you for hopping on. I think I was just scrolling through Instagram um, aimlessly and your page popped up and you have so much content and doing such great work with the specialty of TMJ and thousands of people are suffering with that. So it's an honor to have you on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Dr. Priya, where are you from originally? So I grew up in Washington state up near Seattle, but currently um, I am in Vancouver, Washington. That's where my practice is, which is just a little bit north of Portland, Oregon. Very nice. And how did you get into this field? Were you just a general dentist at first? Uh, did you go right into the specialty? How did, what happened there? Uh, yeah, so I graduated dental school in 2007 and I practiced for about 11 years until I met my mentor in 2018. And my TMJ mentor was sort of one of the big TMJ names in the area. He was in Portland mm -hmm. and his name is Dr. Arthur Parker. So I met him sort of on a whim. I walked into his wife's jewelry store and her and I got to talking and she told me what her husband was doing. And I was so amazed that his whole practice was TMJ only, like no general dentistry, nothing else. And I thought, well, he must be really good at what he does <laughs> to have a practice like that. But in dental school, and I went to a really great dental school, um, but we just didn't learn too much about uh, TMJ treatment. So at that point, I had noticed that maybe I had three to five patients every year that would come into my general dentistry practice with, now I realized they had a disc displacement without reduction, which basically means the jaw was locked closed, they could barely open, they were in a ton of pain. And I didn't really recognize the condition or what to do about it, more importantly. And so I would sort of do what I could and keep my fingers crossed and hope for the best. Yeah, so I yeah. thought, you know, here's my opportunity when I met his wife to shadow someone who treats this probably regularly. So I began shadowing him at the end of 2018 and we just hit it off from day one. And I went home and I told my husband, I said, this is it. This is what I want to do. I'm hooked. Very and cool. so, yeah, I got lucky. And so he mentored me for a good three years. And then he retired in 2021. I bought the practice and moved it just about 10 miles north to Vancouver, Washington, because that's where my house is and my kids are. Very nice. I did a very similar thing with upper cervical, bought an existing practice and, you know, just kind of built it off from there. Yeah. Um, so, so, Doc, where do you believe there? I feel like there's a lot of different avenues uh, TMJ can start from. Does it start in the jaw? Does it start in the neck? Is it muscular? Is it, you know, is it a misaligned jaw? How do you like, you know, if a patient comes in and says, I have TMJ, what, what, what's your next step there? Well, the, the next step is the first step <laughs> is always an examination, right? I mean, that's for all of us, but the, I found one of the most important parts of the examination is actually the whole history. Mm. My mentor would always say the mystery is in the history because yeah. <laughs> uh, their whole story will sort of paint this picture and you can sort of pick parts out like, hey, you've had four whiplashes in a row. Your neck is probably super involved and that's feeding up to affect your jaw. Mm -hmm. Or uh, there's really no history of any injury to the head, neck or jaw or any spine injury there's no history of that but then you look in their mouth and there's a bite pattern that's very prevalent a few bite patterns with tmj disorders and you see okay there's that bite pattern plus you're clenching and grinding so you're just enhancing that bite pattern every time your teeth come together eventually the muscles and joints are like enough we're done here very <laughs> cool dysfunction starts and so you kind of i think it's so important to listen to everybody's story and mm -hmm. a lot of the exam is is that but then, of course, we do a muscle palpation exam. We feel the joints. I do a postural exam. I check leg length. Like you probably Very not cool. see most dentists doing that. Yeah. Um, if there's a lot of whiplash incidents and the leg length is off, I start su su suspecting um, an upper cervical involvement. And so I have upper cervical chiropractors nearby that I work regularly with. Uh, so, so I feel like TMJ, like the the causes for it, the way that it presents it can be all over the board and that makes it very tricky. Yes. 
Now, um, when people come into my office for TMJ, I'm crossing my fingers, hoping the majority of it is coming from the neck because that's what I do. And there are cases where the TMJ is, it's not budging. And then I like to send people out to a TMJ specialist mm -hmm. like yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you have somebody coming from like an upper cervical practice where their neck is, it's, it's aligned, it's okay, and the TMJ symptoms aren't budging, what are you thinking? So I'm usually thinking it's the bite because even if you're, even if the neck is like perfect, you, you get it exactly where you want it, the teeth are still coming together and that can make the muscles and the joints very mad. Mm -hmm. And so what an orthotic does is it sort of takes that imbalanced bite that may be contributing, that it's likely contributing to the TMJ issue just out of the equation. And it puts the muscles and the joints in a very optimal position. And that has worked really well with um, my upper cervical patients, I guess the ones that have seen the upper cervical chiropractors in the area. Very cool. Now there is an orthotic, there's a night guard, there's a permanent, sometimes I have patients come in with the permanent, there's something permanent in their mouth that they can't take out for a while. Yeah. What, how does, how does that work? Tricky, I know. Uh, the, so, so the terminology is all over the board, which mm -hmm. first off is tricky. So the way I talk about it is there's just two words. There's a night guard and there's an orthotic. Now the word splint, which many people use too, I've heard dentists use the word splint for a night guard and an orthotic. So that's confusing. So I just don't even use that word. So we're just gonna throw that one in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> but night guard and orthotic is what I use. So a night guard you can get from the drugstore, you can get it from your dentist. All it does is protect your teeth. Mm -hmm. It does not treat your muscles and your joints. So it prevents your teeth from breaking from the forces of clenching and grinding. So night guards definitely have value but they're right. not gonna help you if you have a TMJ issue. Interesting. So what a night guard does is we take impressions of your teeth, so molds of your teeth or scans, however we get a record of, of your teeth. And then we basically look at your bite and we just replicate that. So we give you, or we don't even replicate it, we just give you a flat plane to kind of grind against or clench against. So you're just gonna, the muscle memory is there, so you're just gonna always try to clench or grind into your usual bite pattern. Mm-hmm. Um, some people will grind a little forward to get out of that bite pattern, but it's still not guiding your jaw where to go. So that's that's a night guard. Now, a TMJ orthotic is very different because it does treat the muscles and the joints. So at my office, the way I do this, and every TMJ dentist is different, so I can only speak mm -hmm. for myself, is I have technology and software that measures where your muscles are the most relaxed. It's a very specific position called the correct resting length. Every muscle in our body has a correct resting length. So the bicep is resting like this. I don't know if you can see my arm, right? Mm -hmm. And it's contracted like this. So many people come to me where all these muscles are, are just constantly contracted. And because of that, it causes a lot of pain. It builds up lactic acid, toxins, and they're in pain. And so we have technology that finds where the muscles are in their most relaxed position. And then we build a daytime and a night time orthotic, that's what I do at my practice, to literally hold the jaw or guide the jaw to that optimal position. Now with the orthotics, there's like three dimensions that are really important. There's the right and left, there's the forward and back, and then there's the up and down, the vertical. The most important one to get right is the right and left. Yeah. Our joints cannot tolerate much right and left movement. And so the software that I have, I really rely heavily on that to get that right. I can't eyeball that. <laughs> mm -hmm. How does the software work? So basically we use, a, we use TENS therapy, transcutaneous okay. electrical nerve stimulation. Um, and what it does, we use it for about 45 minutes to an hour. And the TENS that we use is a very specific FDA approved one for the small or FDA cleared one for the small muscles of the head, neck, and jaw. And so when the TENS is going, and I also put a little appliance in the mouth that kind of discludes the teeth and has these sort mm. of water pillows. And those that kind of serves as a water bed for the muscles. So Very they cool. finally get a chance to get out of that like angry position that they're in. Um, but the TENS is really important too. So after about 45 minutes to an hour of the TENS, the muscles are usually sitting in, in their relaxed position, their optimal position. So then we record that with a very sophisticated jaw tracking technology. So it's like a head. Very cool. Records it all. Yeah. 
So I'm very dependent on that for the right and left position, even the forward and back, which is the next most important. So and that will tell you that will tell you if the left side, one of the muscles on the left side is tighter than the right it and, can. and vice versa. Very yeah, it cool. can tell you how much they're firing too. Just when your teeth come together, it can measure how much your muscles are firing. So we have a, EMGs also we, you, we can use with that software. So then you can put the orthotic in and also measure how much the muscles are firing and it should be way less. So it's really an objective measurement. It's not like me eyeballing it. And that's what I yeah. think a lot of TMJ people that call themselves TMJ dentists and make orthotics, they they eyeball everything and you just can't do that. Yeah. Everybody's in my opinion. <laughs> no, I agree, yeah. Position is different. So I use that technology. I also use my knowledge of their condition. So if their condition is mostly muscular, I rely heavily on that technology. If the condition is mostly joint, like there's a disc displaced without reduction, the jaw is locked closed. I use the technology. Yes, I definitely do. But I also know that the disc is too far forward and in. Hmm. So we have to build the orthotic to help recapture that disc. So the so orthotics I, can recapture discs like that. They can help recapture. They can discs. help. Yeah. yeah, they can help. They can't. I don't think they can do it on their own. I've seen that happen maybe twice. But usually you need more than that. Very cool. And so what's the healing process like for somebody that gets their orthotic? I'm sure you have people that put it in and it, it gets better very quickly. And then you have people that have been suffering for 20, 30, 40 years, and it's it's going to take some time. So is it like braces where it's slowly starting to realign? How does, how does the orthotic work over time? So what the orthotic um, – so, so with it, I have um, – I have my patients wear it during the day and during the night, except for when they're during the day, except for when they're eating or drinking. Mm -hmm. So their bite does reset. And we're trying to hold the muscles and the joints in a really specific position to allow things to heal. But I'm trying not to change the bite because mm -hmm. many adults don't want to go through braces again. So mm -hmm. it's sort of a tricky balance because there is a chance your bite can change. If you're holding the jaw in a different position all the time, the, your jaw can start to adapt to that position, right? Right. And then what? Your teeth aren't going to line up. <laughs> Very so interesting. It's, it's sort of a tricky balance. Um, and some people go come in saying, I want braces after all this. So they don't care if their bite changes. And those are actually kind of easier cases because <laughs> you can just tell them your bite's going to change. This is how it's going to go. Whatever. But most people don't want their bite to change. So the healing process, once I give them the orthotics, I usually see them every one to two weeks, depending on the severity of the TMJ condition. When they come back to my office, and it's usually after they've had a neck adjustment, an upper cervical adjustment, um, then I come in and I do my own sort of therapy. And I learned recently, I didn't really know what it was called, but it's called craniofacial therapy. So we loosen up the muscles in the head, neck, and jaw. So I, I do that manually and I start at the base of the neck. I work my way forward. It's basically like a really nice massage for very your nice. head, neck, and jaw. And I and if they've just had their cervicals adjusted, I'm very gentle around the neck. I don't mm -hmm. do much there and I kind of come forward. Uh, we work on the masseters a lot, the temporalis. I go inside the mouth, I release muscles. And then for those that have like the severe jaw issues, like the disc displacement, I actually manipulate the jaw. And I do this cool. in a subtle but effective way to help the disc get back in alignment. And sometimes during that manipulation, that's when they'll unlock, unlock the disc. Very cool. Alignment. And you, you do the manipulation with your hands or instrument. How does that work? Very yes. cool. With my hands. And then once everything is lined up, loosened up after the therapy, I check and adjust the orthotics because they can't change, but the patient can. Mm -hmm. And so once things are lined up really well, loosened up, we adjust the orthotics to try to hold what we just did. It's a chair side adjustment. Then I see them again in two weeks and then again and again. And as they get better, I slowly notice like the first thing to go away is ear pain. For whatever mm -hmm. reason, that's the first thing to go away. Then headaches, then jaw pain. Then, then if the jaw has been locked closed where you can barely open, it'll slowly start to click and pop again. So that means it's not locked anymore. <laughs> but the disc is still coming in and out of alignment. And then slowly they regain their range of motion. I mean, it's really cool to see, but it's not overnight usually. Absolutely. Like, most people are in treatment anywhere from like four to eight months, give or yeah. take months. Like there are cases where a lady was coming to me with chronic headaches. Like she would just wake up 
with the worst headaches. And it, she said it was affecting her marriage. It was affecting her work. It was, and she's like, I just know it's coming from my jaw. And so I made mm -hmm. her the nighttime orthotic. And I usually give people the nighttime one first and a week later, the daytime one. She didn't even want the daytime one. She was like, I feel so good. <laughs> I, want, I love this. She, she was thrilled. And so um, she did end up getting the daytime one. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, she, you know, some people it's overnight and some people it's a longer process, depending on the severity of the issue. Yeah. And for those listening, TMJ is not secluded to jaw pain, kind of like what you mentioned before, yeah. jaw pain, facial pain, gum pain, migraines, headaches, eye pressure, um, brain fog, like ear pain, ear clicking, popping. There's so many different symptoms. And that is just amazing. Uh, the work you do, uh, you can clear up a lot of that with a precise jaw exam orthotic um that's 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 amazing yeah yeah i love it like I'm, I'm very passionate about it i love it it's it's so gratifying i can i can help people go back to you know being happier on their loved ones or being able to work as efficiently as they want to and it's it's really really great now um is there any case where you recommend like braces that will help no. Or do you ever recommend braces or no? No, no, I never yeah. recommend braces. And the reason is, is because my mentor really drilled into me that when the muscles and the joints are really dysfunctional and angry, there's clicking, there's popping, the jaw is locked, the muscles are mad, jaw pain, headaches, facial pain, pain behind the eyes, whatever it may be, the phase one TMJ treatment, and this is probably the one thing that most TMJ doctors agree on, phase one is always stabilize the muscles and stabilize the joints. Phase two is then move the teeth with braces to that stabilized position. So uh, the few cases I've seen where I have patients come see me and they say that, oh, this dentist told me that the Invisalign would fix my headaches and it just made them worse. It didn't help at all or it just didn't help, whatever it may be. Um, that's usually what I hear. I, I, Invisalign to me, it's, it's so much about lining up the teeth and getting them mm -hmm. in balance, which is great because that can be what caused the problem in the first place, but it's not treating the muscle. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, ha I had Invisalign and anytime I got a new tray, my muscles would be on fire because things are shifting. Yeah. Things are shifting. Interesting. Yeah. So, so, and my mentor would always tell me also that like the way the teeth fit together, like cogs on a gear and the two joints, it's like a tripod like relationship between them. So if these joints are clicking and popping or you have a very limited range of motion, there's there's something going on in the joints, why would you start moving teeth? Now all three mm. legs of the tripod are affected. So fix two legs of the tripod and then go on to the bite. So that's kind of one thing that we all agree on. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you feel about, does it ever come from actual, like the teeth or the wisdom teeth? Do you, how, does, uh, do, how do you feel about the actual wisdom teeth surgery? Is that affecting TMJ at all, or are people getting it done unnecessarily, or any well, thoughts on a, that? It, you know, it's a tricky one. I I think that if the wisdom teeth are positioned in a way where it can they can damage the teeth in front of them, which I've definitely seen, you've got to get them out. You've just yeah. got to get them out. And the tricky part is is that many times people have no TMJ issues before the extractions, and then suddenly they're like jaw locks closed or. Mm they have a lot of headaches afterwards or neck pain or whatever. I've seen that a lot. And that's because the muscles have likely been compensating either because of neck injuries, spine injuries, uh, the way the teeth come together, chronic clenching, grinding, and then suddenly staying open for that long and that wide is like the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah. But if the patient never had pain before that, how is the oral surgeon that removed the wisdom teeth supposed to know? Yeah. So it's tricky. It's, it... <laughs> Yeah. I don't have a one size fits all answer for that one, you know? And um, you said phase one, most TMJ doctors kind of agree on. Where does it kind of, when does the kind of fork in the road uh, diverge there? Uh, I think, I, I you know, I, I recently came across one TMJ doctor who doesn't believe in any soft tissue work. Hmm. Shouldn't touch the muscles. You need to leave them alone. The orthotics will do everything. And I just don't agree with that yeah. at all. Um, I have, I know another TMJ dentist that believes that once you give someone the orthotics, you never touch them again. They don't need adjustment. This is the perfect spot. That's that. Yeah. I agree with that. So, I mean, these people have probably had successes doing it their way. So I'm not by any means bashing anyone, but 
there's so many different ways. And then there's people that will just make a night guard and call it an orthotic or they'll make, I don't like that. And yeah. I also don't like when many people will make a nighttime appliance and call it an orthotic, but it's just a sleep apnea appliance. Hmm. Not just aid, those are important too, it, but it's a sleep apnea appliance. It's not a TMJ orthotic. So like there's, there's so much and there's no like standardized way of doing things, which is very frustrating for patients, you know? So that's why I created my channel as a way to put more information out there. My YouTube, my, you know, everything, so all the socials. Is there something, cause obviously I, uh, you know, your offices in uh, Washington, we I would like a lot of people to come see you, but is there anything that you can kind of lay a foundation for, for people listening and saying, listen, I have a lot of these issues. How do I find a, a how do I know I'm going to a good TMJ uh, specialist near me? I, how yeah. many people, how many people use that, the, that muscle equipment? Is it not, not a lot or is well, that that's the tricky part too? So that um, is a method of dentistry called neuromuscular dentistry. Mm -hmm. And even among neuromuscular dentists, there's disagreement. Yeah. So even if you type in neuromuscular dentist in your, my area code, right? Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that they've had a lot of success with treating complex TMJ cases. Mm -hmm. And so I don't really have a great answer for you. I mean, yeah. there's one guy who I would refer to. He's in Kansas City, Missouri. And there's and 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 really like that's it like i don't have a lot of referrals i have a really good tmj physical therapist that i recommend in miami beach florida but mm -hmm. these are like so far from me even and so i've had people fly in from new jersey from boston i had a guy he moved here from toronto for five mm -hmm. months and he was mm -hmm. like get me better and i'll go home i was like okay. <laughs> very nice yeah we did it i i don't encourage people to come fly and see because it's so expensive and yeah. it's so disruptive to your daily life. Yeah. But I don't have a good answer. I am thinking of coming up with, I am going to come up with courses Yeah. Um, over the next couple of years, but um, I'm just not there yet. How does, how does it work when people come and fly and see you on the follow-ups for the follow-ups? Yeah. I tell them they have to come every two to three weeks until two, three I weeks longer. Yeah. yeah. And if their jaw is locked weekly, if possible. So I'm, yeah. I don't try to sugarcoat it. Like yeah. I don't say here's the orthotic and buy, you're going to be better. That's just not how it works. Fair, yeah. Yeah. It sounds like, uh, you closely monitor your page patients every two to three weeks. Um, because like you said that you don't want the orthotic to, uh, you don't want the orthotic to shift or you don't want the jaw to shift and kind of nullify what the or orthotics doing. Yeah. And it will eventually, I mean, that orthotic is going to need adjustment. So I've had a few people that just get the orthotic and like take off <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, where are you? And so then they come back and they're like, well, this isn't helping. I'm like it isn't helping because <laughs> you didn't come back. Right. <laughs> so then we get them back on track and then they're like, oh, okay. And then they, they, they see the value of those extra appointments. Um, they're super important. And so um, so yeah, I, I, I think, and, and eventually we do get to a point where it's stable. Yeah. Like I don't have to adjust the orthotic anymore and there's no more symptoms. So then yeah. I release them from active treatment. I say, keep wearing the nighttime one. I taper all my patients off the daytime one, mm -hmm. but I say, keep wearing the nighttime one. Let me know if you need me. And yeah. they usually come back if it breaks or if their dog gets to it and we go from there. But I mean, at every single appointment with these follow-ups where I do the therapy, if your number one concern was ear pain in my right ear, number two was headaches, number three was facial pain, I don't know. I will ask, I will say, how's your ear pain? And they're like, oh yeah, I haven't had any. Yeah. Or, how's your headaches? Oh, and from, it went from three days a week to like twice a month. Mm -hmm. Or like, you know, and, and I yeah. always ask every single time so that we can really monitor what's changing and what's not, right? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I try to be as thorough as I can, but I do need people to come back. Um, now the, the stabilization phase for upper cervical, depending on the case, I usually say, you know, give it at least three to six months, um, you know, just to get it stabilized. We're going to have to do more work after that, but that's usually a good ballpark figure just to get things stable again. Um, I'd imagine it'd be similar with, the with the TMJ work. How long do you tell people, you know, cause a lot of people want the quick fix and you got to listen, true healing takes time. What's, what's a, a good ballpark frame with a, uh, with, you know, they have the orthotic in and they're getting it maintained properly. Healing four process. to eight months. Four to eight? Yeah, usually. Yeah. Now the severe cases where like, say 
the jaw has been locked for like 10 years. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea how long that's going to take. So I, yeah. I saw one young lady, she came to see me two years after her jaw locked closed because she just couldn't oh my gosh. anybody. Yeah, it yeah. took us 11 months to get her unlocked, yeah. stable, out of pain. So, you know, that's not in my four to eight month range. So Yeah. And I'm sure it's this sounds like identical to upper cervical work. I'm sure people are still in pain and you have to you have to be like, well, your orthotics in alignment there's not much we are going to do today. We just got to give, we just got to let the healing continue to work. Right. Because just because somebody's in pain doesn't necessarily mean that we need to shift the whole game plan around. Right. Right. And, and, and with those people, we really focus then on like the soft tissue work that we yeah. do. And I usually makes them feel much better for at least a few days. Yes. Yeah. And then many people I find too, I, I really grill them on this is, are you clenching really hard into your daytime orthotic? Cause that's holding us back. Like yeah. you've got to stop your daytime clenching and you can train yourself to stop. It's not easy, but you can do it. Nighttime, we can't help it. But daytime, if you're clenching all day into that orthotic super hard, you're delaying your own progress. How do you tell your patients any tips and tricks to consciously stop clenching during the day? <laughs> it's kind of an annoying method, but I call it the timer method. So for the first week, you put a timer on your watch, your phone, whatever you have with you all the time that goes off every 20 minutes while you're awake. If you catch yourself clenching, you take a deep breath, you tell yourself to stop. Um, or I had a patient that snapped her wrist with a rubber band. Mm. I'm not saying I promote that, but it was Just a little, like a little reset, little negative reinforcement that, that helps. Yeah. Her. So the second week you set the timer for every 30 minutes, the third week, every 40, et cetera. By the time you get to an hour, you're usually not clenching anymore because you've become so aware of it. 20 minutes goes like this and people are like, oh my gosh, I'm doing this all day long. I didn't even yeah. realize. And that's huge. So just the, the realization of like, this is what I'm doing is, is a big one. That's cool. And uh, yeah, I didn't think about that. So it's just, it's not even like they need an actual treatment. It's just, you know, just to retrain their brain, not to yeah. clench. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, now, is there anything else that you do besides the orthotics and night guards, um, in your practice for the TMJ? Yeah. Well, the therapy. The, the soft part. tissue therapy. Yeah, the soft tissue therapy and the jaw manipulation are a really big part of it. And then making appropriate referrals when necessary. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, TMJ issues and um, airway, sleep apnea are very Oh, low. yeah. So um, if, if we always have all our patients fill out a sleep apnea questionnaire, and if they've checked off a lot of yeses, like they wake up gasping for air or wake up several times at night to use the bathroom or um, wake up feeling exhausted, whatever it may be, we, we kind of talk about a referral to a sleep doctor mm -hmm. to see if um, sleep apnea is an underlying issue. Because if we're struggling for oxygen at night, our body goes into fight or flight mode. We tend to clench and grind with more force, more frequency, and for longer durations. And that'll lead us to TMJ issues. And grinding the jaw forward actually opens the airway. So it's thought to be like a protective reflex almost if you are struggling for air. So, um, so many of my patients have sleep disordered breathing. I mean, it's probably well over 90%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you see that get better too with the orthotic. Um, and really cool. yeah, really cause cool. that's, that, like, that's, that's right. changing the jaw, which enables the yeah. airway to get more yeah. air at night. Yeah. And to be fair, a TMJ orthotic can, is not approved to treat sleep apnea. So right. I would say like, if you can't tolerate the CPAP, if they're like, if they're diagnosed with moderate, mild, moderate, severe sleep apnea, they usually get a CPAP and they can use that while they use my orthotic. Then once the muscles and joints are stable, everything's happy, no more headache, pain, clicking, popping, whatever it may be. Uh, then I say, I can make you a sleep apnea appliance to treat your sleep apnea with your TMJ prescription built into it. So that's a pretty cool appliance. Yeah. <laughs> it helps the muscles, the joints, and it opens the airway. Very cool. So I've only done that for maybe a handful of patients because many people can actually tolerate the CPAP. So then we don't need to go there. Yeah. And how did you come across upper cervical? Because you said you work with a couple doctors and I think the upper cervical and the TMJ specialty goes hand in hand too. Um, my mentor. My mentor worked with a few in the area. And so I just didn't stop once I took over. He, My mentor is a very unique man. So he mm -hmm. he's a dentist like me, mm -hmm. but he uh, took a lot of 
TMJ physical therapy courses from the renowned TMJ physical therapist, Mariano Roccobato. So -hmm. he took those courses. He worked with a very famous osteopath. He learned craniosacral therapy. I'm trained in craniosacral work. Like he, he just dabbled in everything. And then he took everything he learned and he came up with what we're doing. Made it his own. Very cool. Always be, always be learning, right? Always. (laughs) Yeah. Always be open minded too. Absolutely. And it definitely does take, it can take a team of practitioners to get, you know, one person better these days. There's, you know, there's, there's chemical toxins, there's physical stressors, there's, you know, the, our, our work life, everybody's sitting down all day. It's, it can take a team of people to get someone better. And sometimes it doesn't work the first time around and you revisit it six months to a year later and it starts working. So yeah. Never, never lose hope. Always keep Always. going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dr. Priya, at the end of all my shows, I like to ask my guests, what is one piece of advice that has really resonated with you over the years that you would like to gift the audience could be absolutely anything? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would say don't lose hope. There are practitioners that care about you and that are compassionate and do listen. It's just finding them, which can be tricky, but don't lose hope. There's help out there. And I've just seen that body work and working with multiple practitioners and good communication, we can we can get people feeling better. So if you're feeling hopeless, don't lose hope. There is help out there. Agreed. And Dr. Priya, where can people find you on social media? Yes. So I'm on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. Those are probably the main ones I do. I just joined threads, I guess, too. <laughs> yeah, me too. And I haven't posted any, anything yeah, yet. Yeah, uh, there's so many. So yeah. if you just type in the TMJ doc with like underscores between the words, you should be able to find me on on all of those. Awesome. Well, Doc, thank you so much for coming on. Um, it was wonderful having you on. It was the first time somebody sat down and explained the, uh, the TMJ disorders. And I think it cleared up a lot of things. And I would love to have you back on anytime. Yeah, Enjoy. let me know what- Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right. Okay. Why should I feel the way I do? It's only love and that is